This is an interesting device. It's a development unit for uh, uh, RF imaging technology, and it's called Wallabot. And the guys at Wallabot sent me this because they thought I'd be interested, and they thought you'd be interested. I think you will. It's almost like a glimpse into the future because it's a radar imaging device, but it uses an array of antennas. And as such, that it, it's not... You know, if you point at a solid object, if radio energy can pass through that object, this unit can basically see through it. So it comes with a facility for two leads. It, it's got a USB 3 port and it's got a standard USB on the go port. Now, ideally, I'd have shown you this operating because it sticks magnetically to the back of your phone. And it would have been nice to have shown you this operating, but unfortunately, although theoretically my uh, Android 5.1 should be compatible with it, for some reason the uh, Play Store says it's not compatible, and this seems to happen a lot on the Isle of Man. Or is it because I've not got a flagship phone that it's just not uh, recognising that? But anyway, I, I'll, I've got it running on the computer, so I can actually show you what it looks like on that. So this is actually a uh, technology that was originally created by... Yeyar for three-dimensional medical imaging and it's this is an offshoot of it so to speak it's it's now looking spreading its tendrils out to looking for other applications and um, I'm guessing that you know this could find many applications in machine safety or, or general physical imaging and security it's quite you know it seems to have quite a lot of potential so let's uh, take a look in the computer and look at the demonstration software. We'll try this out and uh, you can see what it does. The Wallabot development team have supplied various bits of uh, software to show what it can do. So as the first example, this is for detecting objects through a wooden surface or, or, or any other uh, radar penetratable surface. And at the moment I've got it sitting face down a wooden table and I'm rotating a wooden I uh, should I say a metal bar underneath and as you can see it sh works out the from the reflections it can work out the positioning and its relationship to the front of the unit so basically speaking you can see through the um, through the table if I select sensor target detection the unit will recalibrate uh, so it can rule out any background objects that are in its field of view and once it's recalibrated it will then show a target depending on objects it sees. So if I place my hand under now, it detects my hand and it shows the position. It also shows the strength of signal. The red is the highest strength of signal uh, reflection and the blue is the lowest. So as I move my hand backwards and forwards, it can work out the distance from my hand to the unit and its position. And if I introduce another object and if I introduce two, then it will work out the strongest signal and uh, show the target position for that. If you look at the raw signals that are coming out of the unit, you can choose an antenna pair and it will show the relation, the signals that's being detected using those two antennas. So as I move my hand about again, you can see the signal getting stronger or weaker. And if I introduce another antenna pair, then you can see how it changes relationship to each other as I move my hand about. So let's uh, take a closer look at the unit now uh, that we've seen what, what sort of things it can actually do. So now that we've seen what it does, let's take a look inside. And the first thing that you see when you open it up is this very obvious custom chip made by VR. And its number is VYYR2401-A3, but uh, it is a dedicated chip, presumably, to this task. And you can tell it's running all antennas because the tracks, you can see this very distinctive pattern of through holes radiating out from the chip and forming very curvy tracks, no sharp bends. It's all very smooth curves for the, probably for the frequencies involved. Next to it, next to the USB port here, is a CY-USB3014BZX. And this is a USB controller with a processor in it, a really fast USB 3 controller. And next to it is this chip here, which is... Um, serial flash, I believe, and if we take a look at the back, oh, the other uh, only other circuitry here that's really obvious is what I'm guessing are little power supply sections, each with their own little choke. And next to each antenna, there's a small cluster of four components. I think it's just four components. Maybe six components, but uh, they're all resistors and capacitors. 
and if I carefully lift this out now, on the other side it reveals all the antennas and I'm going to be careful not to touch the front of these in case it's, they're sensitive to fingerprints. There's also in the vicinity of the, the same area, in fact directly on the other side, the flash chip, there's an EEPROM chip, a 24LC256 32K by 80 prom. And then these antennas. I'm not sure if these are standard antennas. They they look as if they could be a standard antenna. And it's very reminiscent of the antennas you get um, for GPS reception, where it's a sort of, I'm guessing, is it a ceramic block, a dielectric block with the sort of printed antennas on the top and the gold pins going through. And in operation, you can select any antenna, you can fire a pulse of uh, radio energy out. This is, as far as I know, this is how it works. And then you can use all the other sensors if you wish to actually then uh, determine, you know, when that, it, how long it took for reflection to be received. And by fairly complex and very spatial processing, it must be really complex processing in the software, it can then determine objects and their position relative to this array of sensors in a fairly complex three-dimensional space. And applications I can think of this would be a more modern version of the proximity detectors for automatic doors as you walk up to them instead of the ones that just open regardless when you walk past them. Uh, this unit could actually spatially detect you, human bodies actually walking, uh, or anybody really, walking towards the door in a very distinct direction. It could also be used on the pedestrian crossing and traffic lights to detect the presence of people. At the moment they use a single unit that just points down that detects basically simple movement, uh, Doppler type reflections of the people standing at a crossing. And the idea there is that, you know, when uh, if someone presses the button to cross and then they decide to jaywalk across the road, then there's nobody there. And if it detects that nobody there, it can cancel the, the uh, crossing signal. But that means if you stand too still for too long, it cancels it as well. But this could actually make quite informed decisions based on an image that it'd take, it would take. It would know the surroundings and then it would uh, make a decision based on whether you know there wasn't a largish object, human shaped object in that in that area. It's got lots of uh, potential, but um, it's trying to think what is the killer application for this. It's certainly the idea of being able to look through walls with it um, is quite interesting, and I think they're going to evolve the software so it can it ultimately gets more complex and detailed mapping because uh, really the product is still, although they've been working on it a long time, it's still relatively in its uh, early stages for, for this technology. So it'll be interesting to see what direction this goes. It may be that in the future our phones will have an array of these built into the back and we'll be able to use them in construction sites for actually looking through walls and, you know, finding objects and tracing them out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, certainly it's a very sophisticated technology and it's kind of intriguing um, to see this sort of fairly early, early development kit and uh, it'll be good to see where it goes.